Tech News Weekly is sponsored by GoDaddy. Get a .com domain name for only $249 by using offer code QUEENS at checkout. Starting Tech News Weekly in 3, 2, 1... Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tech News Weekly. I'm your host, Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by my brilliant colleagues and, and co-hosts and, and friends in this road trip we call life. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce John, uh, also known as Suncast. How are you doing, John? Hey, Andrew. What's up? Uh, not much. Uh, long week. You were traveling all last week. You got in late. That's why yep. we had no show. Yeah. Uh, I, I was on the road until... Like almost eleven o'clock Friday night. Wow, unbelievable! Uh, which we'll talk about that. You 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 went to Nashville. You had a mm-hmm. nice little trip down there. You uh, it was it was crazy for me that I didn't have Suncast to call <laughs> at two o'clock in the morning when everything breaks. Uh, very upsetting, but I, I I pushed through. I I drank a lot. I took a lot of sedatives, and I made it. So I hope you're happy. So almost a nearly normal week for a you. A very normal week for me. Nothing changed. <laughs> uh, also with us this week is Josh Coleman, uh, T4Show.com, uh, Grab the Loot, which uh, oh, is oh, a new that. project that he's working on. Uh, he's getting a promotion, but I have, I have some issues with it. What? Nothing. Oh, I like SA. Head. I actually do like your co-host. I like SA. Oh, look at that. So yeah. I'm not show. crazy about you. Of course not. You never are. But yeah, new show. Check it out at grabtheloot.com. Uh, and yeah, I'm happy to be here. And little known fact, I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee there, John. Cool. How, how about that? It's I've an never awesome been. place. Is it awesome? I don't know. It is. That. Why do you hate okay. Nashville? Why do I hate it? Yeah. I mean, I have not been since I left at the tender age of 12, so okay. I really can't really... So your experience. Oh, so you've never even been to the bars or anything? No, not not a chance. Jumping Actually, that's not one hundred percent true because my dad used to play at the bars, and I used to go to the bars. Yeah, yeah but that's not the same when you're twelve years old. Well, <laughs> that's a very true statement there, Jim. <laughs> uh, before we begin, I want to uh, I want to thank our sponsor of the show, and that's GoDaddy.com. Affordable domain names at GoDaddy. Uh, you get a .com domain name for two forty nine when you use offer code Queens at checkout when you go to GoDaddy.com. Uh, I like to look at domain names as 21st century real estate. I say that all the time because it is true. It is real estate. You're buying a piece of digital property that you could do whatever you want. You could build this gigantic website. You could build a tiny little website on there, or you could hang on to the domain name and someone might come knocking and say, hey, listen. I want that name. I want to buy it from you. That happened to us. We sold a domain name uh, for a very nice amount uh, because we ended up not even using it. I mean, we bought it for a project for my wife, and we ended up not even using it for that, and somebody bought it from us. So you know what? It's all worth it. And at two forty nine, dollars you can't go wrong. $2.49 for a .com domain name by entering promo code QUEENS at checkout. I want to thank GoDaddy for supporting Tech News Weekly. Uh, so, guys, let's talk about the big news, and that's BlackBerry. Uh, boy, what a what a tragic week it was for this company. <laughs> uh, they initially, on Friday, they announced that they were uh, they had leaving. a lot of announcements. They had many, and, and it's very confusing. Friday, they announced that they were leaving the consumer market and yep. concentrating it on enterprise. And my question was, when did they ever? enter the consumer market <laughs> to begin with so i was like i was like oh wow so nothing's gonna change they're gonna be an enterprise company uh then they paused the blackberry uh, messenger rollout for ios and android that was supposed to come out last that week was a disaster uh then they announced that they had a 935 million dollar loss for the second quarter Ooh. due to the z910 inventory uh the failed uh it's launch of the z10 z- uh, what did i say z910 yeah. I got used to the nines for the for the Microsoft stuff, the Z10 and the Q10. I, uh, I combined the two. Uh, then they announced Sam that boy. they have entered an agreement for four point seven billion dollars on Monday for the sale of the company to Fairfax Financial. Uh, we still don't know what the fate of this company is going to be. 
Uh, John is the resident BlackBerry expert. He, he, he was a major contributor to one of the largest BlackBerry uh, blogs and websites out there. Uh, John, this is a, a tragic, tragic story uh, when you talk about this company's past and, and the history of it. This is something that I've been saying has been coming for, I think, at least two years now. Is that, you know, BlackBerry had this very slim chance with the Z10 and the BlackBerry 10 operating system to survive. Unfortunately, they just couldn't get past perception that they're just a failing company. They just they just took too long to come out with the new stuff. And that's all that happened is it's just uh, and it's sad, too. Um, and one of the bigger stories here is BlackBerry Messenger. Um, apparently, it leaked out for Android and a bunch of people started downloading it, and apparently there's some sort of bug with it that caused a lot of havoc with their servers. So they ended up having to pull it and also delay the release of the iOS version. And they don't have a new release date for a BBM anymore for, for either Android or iOS. And there was, I was surprised at how much interest there was for BBM for iOS and Android. And then they announced, uh, there's actually another announcement in there too, is that T-Mobile is no longer carrying the Z10 at their brick and mortar stores, which is just disastrous news. Then they announced um, they lost almost a billion dollars because of the Z10. Uh, that's which is just, unbelievable. It's shocking, which is really bad news. I, I don't necessarily understand why, but I can understand that it has happened. But I guess kind of the silver lining here is the fact that they have been they, they've entered into agreement with um wh what's the name of it Fairfax. Um, financial Fairfax, Fairfax. Fairfax yeah it's 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 a consortium of the largest shareholders of BlackBerry and they're going to sell they agreed to sell the company for four point seven billion dollars which if you looked at them in like two thousand six two thousand seven they were estimated at like eighty billion dollars. Which is a huge, huge loss for them to see how far they've come in just a matter of five, six years. Yeah, that's a major loss. But now, what's the future of this company? I mean, we're, we're hearing, are they going to continue? Uh, because here's a weird thing. Along with that announcement, I believe on Saturday it came out that BlackBerry was deciding to concentrate on four phones a year rather than six phones a year. Right. And... And then on Monday, they announced that this this uh, acquisition, this, this this deal to sell the company to this uh, to that financial group. But there's a lot of stuff pending. It's it's not 100 percent at any point. Yeah. Fairfax could go and say, well, we, we don't we, we can't assess your company at this price. So we're going to uh, drop our offer or lower our offer. There's, there's many things that they could do with this. But uh, what are they going to do with this company? Is it? I mean, are they going to kill it? Are they going to continue, you know, trying to save it and, and hemorrhage money for X amount of time? I, what's the future of it? Last week they did announce that they were going to lay off like forty percent of BlackBerry employees, which is like, I, I guess I, the number I heard was like forty five hundred employees. So which that is super seems sad. to be happening. Yeah. And and other than that, the the consortium is just going to once the sale happens, they're going to evaluate BlackBerry in the state that it's in and decide where to go from there. So they're not even sure what they're going to do with BlackBerry right now. I mean, do you um, think they, they should kill it? Yeah. I Honestly, I think they they should because there's just no getting over that perception of where BlackBerry is today compared to everybody else. There's just... Wow. Because you've said it yourself that BlackBerry 10 is not an awful operating system. It's not. The phone isn't awful either. Yeah. Camera but They have great. that perception that no matter what they do, they're just not going to be able to get over that hump. I mean, is there is is there anything they could do at this point? Um, a, a large majority of their assets are tied up into their patents. Um, that would right. be a good boost for anybody that gets them. They could um, license the patents out to Microsoft, Nokia, um, Samsung. They could get a hold of those patents, and that could be a big uh, revenue booster for uh, the consortium. What do you think, Josh? I mean... BlackBerry does have a huge, huge name when it comes to the business world. I mean, you think but when you hear the word BlackBerry, you're you're instantly going to think of a business environment. So they have that going for them. Uh, it's I mean, this is huge, huge loss for them, especially to those 4,500 uh, employees that got laid off. But you ask, where do they go from here? 
It's almost like they need somewhere to almost, better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost like they need to <laughs> license out their their uh, different technologies and the messaging and stuff to maybe like an HTC or another or a Samsung provider, and they come out with a BlackBerry style phone. Uh, you know, the, the OS is a good OS. I, I mean, right. I was actually surprised on how good it was. Uh, it, it just didn't get that attention that it deserved. Uh, but, you know, with that said, it was a couple years too late. If this OS had come out two years ago, it might have been a totally different story where... If, you know, if they did everything that they're doing now two, three years earlier, I think they would have been in much better shape. If they right. had actually came out two, three years ago and released BBM to iOS and Android then... I think that would have been a huge game changer because it was only two, three years that we've had iMessage for iOS. And I think that would have been – WhatsApp has really taken off in the last two or three years. So I think if BlackBerry had done that, that would have been a huge deal for them. Well, do you think But that, unfortunately, um, like everything else they do, they take two or three years to do whatever it is that they're trying to do. Yeah. Do you guys think that like Android is still has a hole there and missing that type of message? Absolutely. App? Absolutely. Their so messaging could they system – fit in there? The, the, I'm telling you, Josh, their messaging system is probably one of the most uh, scattered f uh, systems I've ever seen. There's, m they, they tried to make it a little better uh, by merging Hangouts and right. Google Talk, but right. it's still unclear what it is because they're right. still calling it Talk in some scenarios. Um, th the other issue is that th their messaging is not incorporated on, uh, in their messaging software in, uh, in Android. And until they do that, uh, they're gonna. It's still gonna be an uphill battle. I'm hoping that we're gonna see it on the next one. I just got a weird message of a limousine by a random person. That is weird. Um, and now you see Andrew's ADD kicking in. Yeah, I'm just staring at it. It's really bizarre. But <laughs> what uh, messaging app did you get it in? Uh, in regular uh, Google. Oh, okay. But again, it's very scattered. And I'm hoping in the next version, 4.4, they kind of combine these two because I would love to get my messages in one universal yes. format rather than everything else. Uh, I don't like using the third-party applications like WhatsApp. I don't use that. Yeah. Uh, I don't use any. I don't use Kick. I don't use, uh, and I probably wouldn't use BBM because it's a whole new, you know, format, a whole new, whole new interface that you got to invest time in, and you don't know if everybody's on it. So I kind of want to stick to what I'm using iMessage, on the other hand, is phenomenal because I'm able to iMessage my wife's cell phone from my laptop. Yeah. And that's great. There was a rumor that there might be a desktop version of BBM. See, if that happens and then maybe Google gets behind it, maybe they have something there. Yeah. I don't, I don't but know. again, this is two, three years too late. Right, right. Uh, it, it's it's a shame, and this just shows you. I mean, when this co this company was running with two CEOs, that is a that is not a good sign. When you have two, they CEOs. ran BlackBerry into the ground doing what they did. They did plain and simple. Jim Balsillie and Mike Lazaridis are two of the worst things to happen to BlackBerry in the last five so years. So why were they allowed? Was, in they control. were great when when BlackBerry first started out, but in the last five six years, they were the worst things of BlackBerry. Yeah, there was no. I mean, there was really no hope. So. uh if they do chop this company up right. and they start selling the patents, who would be a major player in purchasing? I mean, I could see both Google entering this market because enterprise is something that they really uh, don't have a lot of traction in. Uh, Microsoft obviously is the uh, is a company that everybody's assuming will purchase this because they do have a presence in enterprise. But uh, mm -hmm. who is the more likely candidate to kind of buy up everything that they're doing? I would think Microsoft as well, but I think Google should really think about bringing that price tag up to hopefully make a run at it themselves. But it seems like Microsoft is the perfect fit there to me. What do you think, John? Uh, it's so hard to say where this is all going to go. Um, and even if we see something happen, it could be a year or more before we actually see what actually happens with the sale of BlackBerry. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I would like it to stay for a little bit. Now, the other question is the operating system. What happens to the operating system? Yeah, this, this is exactly the, the same situation as Palm and WebOS. Yeah, but with this Palm. Is, it's such similar. It's very similar, but with Palm, here is the thing. HP bought Palm, and you knew that they were going to produce Palm-based you know, hardware, WebOS-based hardware. 
They failed at it yeah. because they dropped the ball way too early on that thing. I think if they stuck with it for a little bit, they could have had something fascinating and interesting there for people to want to get. But uh, it was a little different with Palm because it wasn't a company buying it to kill it. It was a company buying it with the intention of, okay, I'm grabbing all the patents, obviously, but we're also going to produce hardware with this thing. They put out two Palm devices, two Palm uh, <laughs> Pre's with this. Right. Uh, and again, same story. Way too slow to evolve. But I think in Palm's case... They had the problem of they were being compared to the iPhone. Uh, there was no chance well, they're, that they would have survived. They're all being compared to the not iPhone. anymore. Not. I think it's a different market now. I think it's sure. a totally different market now where sure. you don't have that iPhone killer stigma with every phone that's released on the market, every smartphone. Back then, if you remember, every phone that came out was the the headline was, "Is this the iPhone killer?" No. And you know what? Palm was running on fumes at that point, and they did not create an iPhone killer. And they just fell apart because Apple was so ahead. They were three years ahead of the entire market. So, of course, they're not going to do well. BlackBerry's problem is that they waited way too long until they had no more money. <laughs> In my honest opinion, um, I'm not expecting anything from BlackBerry at this point on. They're done. Wow. In my opinion, I think they're pretty much done. Buried. I, at the most, Buried. I think I, I think at the most, uh, their, their worth is in the patents. And they're going to license that on, and I think that's going to be that. Done. They're finished. I don't know. Very disappointing. It is sad. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft also announced the Surface 2 this week. Uh, I uh, met up with uh, a couple of people from Microsoft. Mary Jo Foley and Paul Thorat were there also. We hung out. We had a couple of drinks. We were talking about the product on Monday. I, w I met up with them after the event. Uh, nice, nice product. It's, uh, it's faster. Go. It's it's go. the performance is better, the battery life is better, but is it enough for anybody to want to buy this product? I don't know. It's the price. I think it all comes down. They need to lower. They need to somehow figure out a way to get that price down where they can say, "Look at this. This is a full laptop, and it's comparable to an iPad, and does so much more." Well, you know, three forty nine, three forty nine is a really good price for this thing. Yeah, and but that's the RT version. The Pro version is the way to well, go. Well, they're not going to be able to do it with the Pro, obviously. Right. But the that's RT the version, no, but the RT, the Surface 1 is 349 The Surface 2, the new Surface, is 449 It's not that cheap. It's almost no. 500 bucks, and you still got to buy that smart cover for $100. So now it's a $550 right. device, and you're not getting Windows on there. That's a problem. Uh, they said that the battery life has gotten significantly better, 75% boost. As well as a 1.6 gigahertz uh, Core i5 Haswell chip that's running uh, much quieter. This is for the uh, Pro, Amazing. obviously. Uh, and that's a fabulous chipset. I, I mean, I would be inclined to buy the Pro. The problem is right. the price, and you know, the, it varies from 899 all the way up to 1799 oh, for the Pro. That's ridiculous. Who's that's spending? The problem. Who's spending nearly two thousand dollars on that on that on that device? Right, when you can get an, an incredible Windows laptop for, I think, like one of the top laptops around is for $14.99, and that gets you a fully maxed out Windows PC. John, what do you make of this? I think it's more than just a price. And it's not the hardware. That's the yeah. thing is I think there's nothing wrong with the hardware that Microsoft is producing. I think it comes down to the price and the software. I think people just are not biting on Windows 8. Windows 8 kind of has a stigmatism now that it's not a great operating system. So people are automatically turned off to it. Um, and it just doesn't behave in the, the way that people are expecting. Yes, it's different. Yes, you can learn to use it. But that's just yet another challenge where a lot of people already have iPhones. They already know how to use an iPhone or they already know how to use a, a smartphone. And picking up a tablet such as an iPad or even any Android tablet functions in some in a very similar way, whereas uh, a Windows 8 tablet does not. Uh, I, I think the biggest problem with RT is that <coughs> they still have uh, desktop on that thing. They need to totally eliminate desktop and yes. just make it that Agreed. metro interface so you kind of know what you're buying. I have this debate with people all the time, especially when we're doing What the Tech, where I still don't think people know what they're buying when they walk into a store. They see this beautiful laptop. They see that it has a Windows logo on it, a uh, tablet. They, they see a Windows logo, so they buy it. They take it home, and they can't install any application on that thing because guess what? It doesn't allow you to. Right. Not only that, but they're also missing a lot of applications still. 
Uh, now, well, you guys not only that, that the- but but even the they're they're calling they're running they're saying they run the same operating system on this as what you have on your desktop, but it's not because you can't install the same applications. So even if you install an application on your your desktop, it's not the same on your your tablet. And that's what they're trying to say is that your desktop is the same as your laptop, as your smartphone, as is your tablet, but it's really not. But they're trying to say it is. And I think there's a lot of confusion in there. And I think people are kind of turned off for, well, you promised me that this was all going to work together. It was all going to be the same product, but it's really not. What was that, Josh? Well, I was just going to say, do you think that uh, eventually we're going to see, because of that Nokia deal, we're going to see a Windows RT made with by Nokia? Or have that Nokia feel and look. I, I, I'm hoping they do a lot more with Nokia. I hope. Th- well, this kind of does. I mean, the Surface is a nice device, but I mean, if you if you brand everything, if Nokia becomes the exclusive hardware provider for all things Microsoft, I think that'd be amazing. I would love to yeah, get a Nokia. Uh, I mean, a laptop that's based on that Nokia look, uh, a tablet, uh, a phone, everything, and it kind of goes together. I think that'd be amazing. Right, and I think that will then also help drive the price down. Uh, of the device. I mean, let's let's be honest. If we could get the Surface RT, this new one, and it the the base model is three hundred dollars with the keyboard, these things would sell like hotcakes. Yeah, but three hundred is not realistic. I think three forty nine, that fifty dollars even makes it fine. Three fifty forty nine. I okay. could be. I could deal with that. Fine. Three forty nine. You buy one? No. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah. because I think of it this way is that for three twenty nine I can get a wind uh, iPad Mini and yeah. it has a million more apps. I don't know. I'm not crazy about the Mini, but we'll see. I wouldn't even buy that three hundred dollars because I just don't like the software on it. Yeah, yeah. That's what it comes down to is that it's not worth the the software. Eight point one is not bad, guys. Not I'm not bad. hating on the Windows software. I like it. I've yeah, never had a problem. It looks like Disney. That's why. It looks like Disney. It's great. The, my problem it. is that I would buy in a heartbeat a Surface Pro if that price was, I mean, seven hundred, eight hundred dollars for like a top of the line Pro. You would buy that. Yeah, but there, it's not available. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, Josh, this is your department. Valve announces oh. Steam OS, uh, a new platform for playing games on your TV. Can you talk yes. about Steam OS a little bit? Okay, so Valve had these these three days. They they did an announcement on Monday, they did an announcement on Wednesday, and they did an announcement today. And it was all about the Steam universe expanding. They say in 2014. Okay, so the first day they announced the Steam OS, and what what their whole thing is that they really believe. And I don't know if it's that they hate Microsoft or there's something going on with Microsoft. They believe that. Linux is going to be the future of gaming in the living room, and they want to have an OS that completely runs on the architecture of Linux, and that they're trying to bring all their their current Valve games onto this, as well as convincing third-party publishers to bring theirs to the Linux living room. So they've created this OS. So where does that take us? Then on Wednesday, they announced that they're going to be making a Steam box. Uh, They're calling it a Steam machine. Um, which, of course, is going to run the Linux um, Steam OS, and that right now, if you go to their site at, um, if you go to the Steam site and click on this new Steam OS, you can sign up for the beta. The only thing is, they're only offering 300 of these devices out, so your chances of getting a beta invited very slim. But uh, it does get people involved to possibly get this. That eventually they'll beta test it, and then there'll be a box that'll be able to buy and put in your living room. And then the the next question was that today they they showed pictures of their new different kind of gamepad is what they like to call it. And if you could bring up pictures, I think you already had brought up one. Uh, something we've pretty much never seen. They're saying this dual trackpad looking device is going to be able to play all of their games on their library. Um, oh, look at where I, the buttons are. That is weird. Weird, right? So... The biggest problem is many PC games is a mouse and keyboard setup. So apparently this controller is going to uh, replace that. So, I mean, how do you feel about I that? I can't really comment on it because I haven't used it. But this is very interesting that they've they've gone this far. A lot of people like I've read a lot of the hate on Twitter right now. A lot of people saying that Steam's drinking their own Kool-Aid, that they've they've gone out of their mind and they're doing this stuff. But 
they're really a very forward thinking company and I'm really curious to see how this all plays why, out. Why do people think this is a bad idea? Because I mean, they have such a great product right now with Steam is like why are they having to now get into the making a box that goes on your laptop? Well, how much is it going to be? That's it. We don't know yet. There's no pricing so at all. So you could you could technically download the Steam OS, put it on a laptop and just run yes. that in your living room, right? All the time. Correct. And, and it's dedicated. That's all it does. Correct. I even have a gaming laptop that has an HDMI out on it, and I can take that to any room in my house, plug the plug it right in, and I've got my own Steam box, and it's running Microsoft Windows, which I think works great with Steam. But for some reason, Gabe Newell, who uh, in his past, oops, in his past, he has worked for Microsoft, and for some reason, does not want to continue to work with them, uh, but against them. But they've also announced that they're going to incorporate some entertainment aspects to this and media aspects to this, rather than just have gaming. Ha yeah, they did talk about Early that. Early on, that was part of the OS, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think it's great. I I think having options like this is really cool. Right. I I'm on the Mac, and I, unfortunately, I haven't gotten into this. Uh, well, see, that's another thing is that people are saying, "Hey, you've been on the Mac now for five years, and you really not every game is available on the Mac. So, what's going to make it any difference that if you go to Linux now that it's going to change how? Because um, it really is going to come down to those third party publishers being able to create a, a stable version that runs on Linux. Um, do you think this is going to take off? Do you think people are going to be inclined to purchase this? <sighs> I mean, it's really good. I mean, in I our, mean, it's tough. We have so much competition out there right now. Right. There's so much competition. I mean, you got things like the Oya, which is a hundred bucks, and you get you get all your Android gaming and stuff there. I mean, you've got so many great games now on the iPad and iPhone. It's really going to come down to price. I think. I think if they can get that box that's a sub two hundred dollar price point, then they have something. But I've said this for you years. Think you would think they would want to have you be able to get in with a box really cheap because most of the stuff they're making the money on is the content that's provided from their Steam store. Yeah. I, I mean, I've said this for years that the casual gamer, um, you, know, you know, I may I may sound like a hypocrite, but uh, I don't know how it's going to play out. I may be wrong, but I don't think the casual gamer is waiting online to buy an Xbox this year. Same thing with... Same thing with uh, uh, same thing with the PlayStation. I mean, in 2006, 2007, the market was totally different. And you know what? People were, even if you weren't gaming as much, you were still going to wait online for that device. Yeah. I was one of those people. I, I think have, the, I, you know what? If I wasn't buying it for, uh, you know, to review and stuff, I would probably not have any reason to buy because all my gaming, uh, my, my, the fix that I get from gaming is, is perfectly satisfied with my iPad. Yep. Exactly, and that's why I think if you ask kids today what they would want for Christmas, if they want an Xbox or a PS4 or an iPad, I think I think almost nine out of ten times they're going to say, "I want that iPad," because they know the games are there and you can do so much more with it. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. You know, you know what'll really be like a nail in a coffin for all these companies is when you somehow, yeah, you come up with a controller for the iPad and you could just Game what. Then it's game over. I agree. Yeah, like like why can't you right now just like with via AirPlay or like a dock or something, just pop it in there, it, or or via Google, you know, Apple TV, just play yeah. all your games and just get a controller. I mean, why can't you do that? I think I think that's got to be coming. I mean, it, they said it in the latest iOS seven when they saw third party controllers was one of the things that said down there. I think we're just waiting for that to happen. I mean, I really think that they have an advantage because they already have a catalog of games. They have thousands of so, games. So many. And all the major publishers as well. I, like, I want to play uh, an awful version of NFL, you know, whatever, Madden on my, yeah, on my iPad. Why can't It's free I? now. You can even get Madden for free. You know what's amazing? The free games, like, they, they give you, like, a free game and then the game is actually, like, four ninety nine, but you could play it a little bit. Right. I always download the free ones, and it's more than enough, because generally I don't play a game more than a half hour. Right. Your favorite game is Update Me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I shouldn't tell you about that new game, Cookie Clicker, should I? Uh, I know about Cookie Clicker. It's genius. Yeah. W what's, what's my favorite game? Update Me. Uh, how does that work? You just go to the App Store and look for uh, things that need to be <laughs> updated, and then you <laughs> click it. <laughs> So now it does it. iOS seven does it on its own. You probably disabled that because it takes away the fun, right? It has taken away the fun. John, have you uh, disabled uh, click uh, update me? 
Uh, I can't remember if I did or not. It's awful. You know what? I, I had it enabled, and now like I'll see like it says like 13 updates, and then it'll automatically be updated, and it's so disappointing. It's so disappointing. <laughs> So bad, uh, John. How do you like iOS seven? You've been using it for a couple of days, and I and I see your tweets, and I'm and I'm uh, sure you're gonna say you don't like it, but let's let's hear your review. I don't like it. Oh God! <laughs> wow. Why? Uh, there, there's several issues that I'm having. One of which is I, I just uh, it's not so much the design as it is some of the effects and des- and choices that they've made for the effects. Um, one of the changes they made is that when you hit the power button or the home button to to turn on the screen, it now fades in or fades out. Yes, which I don't like because to me that feels slower. When I press the home button, it feels like it takes a second or two before I actually see my screen. Yeah, so you know, instead in Android, of it just showing up in Android, I've turned that off. Which, which is which is crazy. I don't know if you can see my phone here. I'm going to press the power button here. And you'll see how long it actually takes uh, pressing now. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's too slow. Why can't I just simply light up the screen? My other issue, I'm having issues with the um, photo stream on there. It's not sending photos over Wi-Fi to my computer anymore. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, there's going to be issues. I actually like it. I, I like the look. I like the Easter feel of it. <laughs> um, it's very Eastery and pastel. Like so, I kind of like it. It works for me. I have yeah. no problem with it. I have no problem. I mean, there, with there, it. There's some parts I like. I mean, I like the notification center. I like the way notifications are done now. I think that's great. But yeah, I'm just not crazy about much of anything else. You know what? I wish they would have done is that instead of for the app switcher, instead of having the icon underneath, I almost wish it would have just had the application name bigger. Because in some ways, when I'm looking at the card for the application. I'm I'm not exactly sure what the application is unless I look at the icon. But if they had actually wrote the name of the application right underneath the card, I think that would have been far more better than it is with just an icon there. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. Hey, I, I had another gaming uh, thing here. Uh, you want to talk about Grand Theft Auto, Josh? Oh yeah. Do you love it? I have so I have an interesting thing to say about it because I. I played the uh, controversial level, um, the torture simulation last night. Why? It's con- it's, there's controversy behind a video game. Yeah. Why? There's actually a part where you um, have a Azerbaijani. Is that how you say that? Azerbaijani, yes. Yes, person. And you're, you're I mean, I don't want to spoil anything, but you're basically in a warehouse and you get to pick which tools to use to torture this man. Okay. I felt... I don't know. I felt like it was a little weird you didn't and almost feel like anything. glorifying torture. I don't. Ah, uh, come on! It's a video game. We I blow stuff. It's, a video game, it's also glorifying really beating needed? beating up prostitutes and and killing people and no, that hijacking. is not part. That is not part of the game. There's not a level where I went and had to beat up a prostitute. Do, do, you've never beat up a prostitute in Grand Theft Auto. Well, yeah, obviously I did it on my own, but I'm saying this was something <laughs> that I had to do. You had to kill this guy before you chose. So you're fine if you have to choose. To beat a prostitute, that's okay to you. If it's your choice, right? That you could do. That's okay. open world. You can do whatever. This is something you had to do to move forward the storyline. Okay. And you had okay, a problem so, with that? No, I just felt like it was not needed. Like it didn't. Like this game. If you're letting, if you're letting someone who's under eighteen years old and you know about to play this game, you are a terrible person, in my opinion. You don't think minors should be playing this game? Not at all. I think this should be an only adult game, and I think it should not be in the hands of someone under 18. Why? What will happen? I don't think they have the mental capacity to handle what's going on in the game. So what are they going to do? They're going to go around torturing Oz- Oz- no, Azerbaijanis? No, I don't think they're torturing, but I don't think they're going to be nice people, and they're going to just be desensitized. Really? You're willing to talk. I listen. I am a huge video game guy. It's just I don't. I have a son now, and I think being a parent has changed my thoughts on this. Where I would not want my son to play this game. So when you were a kid, obviously you played games like this. Well, they didn't really have it to this extent. They no, we that. had Mario. Yeah, there wasn't. Well, really yeah, a- what's a game? What's an equivalent game for us? <sighs> Paperboy. <laughs> I'm trying. I to guess think. Mortal Kombat. More okay. Yeah, Mortal Kombat. Did you walk right. around trying to rip people's, you know, skulls no, I'm not off? 
they're going to do to imitate this. I'm just going to say they're going to be desensitized to things like this. I don't know. I, I, I think that we're able to kind of determine the re- difference between reality and a fictional game. You would hope so. You I would would. hope that you've parented your child enough to handle things like that. But that the, the, but, the problem is that you are going to have mentally ill people out there, such as the Navy Yard shooter, that because they're mentally ill, they're going to kind of take this in, in, in a wrong way, I think. If, it, it's if not know, so much that people don't necessarily aren't able to handle it. It's that they have some mental deficiency. Well, well you know what, though? Then that's the parent's job to determine that. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. I yeah. don't think it's a problem. I think it should just be an adult game. I don't have a problem at all for any adult playing this game. I just think, yes, you need to be an adult to play a game like this. I mean, it, it tackles a lot of like very adult issues going on. I mean, there's there you have a family in this game where your wife is uh, is um, cheating on you. You've got a son who's just doing <laughs> drugs and disrespecting you. You have a daughter who's pretty much doing porn. I mean, there's a lot of adult concepts in it that I don't think a kid needs to even be bothered with with those type of things. Uh, you know, I I by the way, they've they've sold almost a billion dollars oh, worth yeah. uh, over over in 24 That's hours, 800 million dollars in in 24 hours in sales. So it, it's, it's the biggest piece of entertainment in history. Uh. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 hit $1 billion in retail after 15 days on the shelf, and that was actually one of the biggest uh, games out ever. Actually, that was a record holder. Uh, uh, unbelievable that, that that many people bought it. I haven't played one in a long time, probably since San Andreas. I haven't played a Grand Theft oh. Auto game. Well, I mean, besides that, the game, like as an adult playing this game, I have to say it is... An incredible piece of entertainment. I mean, I feel like I am playing a like an A an A level movie. I really feel like they have these things called heists, where it's you and a team of people, and you pretty much plan out how you're going to perform this heist. And each one of your characters has like a special part in the heist, and you can switch between the three because you play as three characters not in this, not just one. Yeah. So you switch to them, and they each have their roles, and you perform these roles, and. I really do think it is a really polished and incredible thing that if you're an adult, um, you should definitely uh, experience. I mean, experience it's, it's, torturing foreigners <laughs> and, and hitting see, prost- see the way and, you say and that. It a, sounds so shady. And beating up prostitutes, but yep. you choose to beat them up. You don't. You're not forced to beat them up. You, you're not you forced just, to beat up. See you. you the way you said that, how you're torturing uh, an Azerbaijani. Yeah, it, it sounds shady, does it not? No, I'm okay with it. But it's sort of saying that, like, this is okay to do to torture. It, in some scenarios, I feel like sometimes I'm being tortured every day by living. That's my torture. Uh, Amazon debuts the Kindle Fire HDX 7 and 8.9 inch tablet. Uh, this almost came out like like a like a non-event, but it, it, it is pretty impressive. It's a nice upgrade to the Amazon Kindle. Uh, they've also added a feature where you could talk to a customer sales rep at any time. Uh, you could do like a face-to-face chat, which is weird. Uh, it is 364 uh, PPI. No, I'm sorry. It's compared to, what is it? 339 PPI uh, pixels um, compared to 221 or 254 on the on its prede- predecessor and 264 on the iPad 3. So uh, some upgrades here and there. John, did you follow this? What do you think of this? Because you have a Kindle Fire. Uh, it's yet another evolutionary step for them, I guess. Um, it's hard to get excited about some of these things that when they come out year after year. I I think the iPhone is somewhat of an exception to that because there's just so much so much hype and fanboy behind it, and they have in the past done some really cool stuff. But generally, these devices that come out year after year, I, I think, are just tweaks. They're evolutionary upgrades. Yeah. Uh, we've had changes over the past year. We've got new processors, some new RAM, and stuff like that. And so they're just updating the devices with these tweaks. It's a nice little device. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I think a lot of people are happy with the Kindle Fires. It's a very safe ecosystem to be in. It's Mm -hmm. very controlled. You can't really screw it up. Uh, A lot of people are already invested in the Amazon experience. So I think this is a great little device. And uh, What about Mayday? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mayday is the one where you could talk to a rep, right? Mayday is incredible for our parents and grandparents. Why? What do they do? 
I feel like I've been a part. I've been a part of Mayday my ho- my whole technological life. Your whole life. You can has hit been a button a now. Yeah. Basically, you can hit a button now. It's called Mayday, and a little uh, box will pop up on your Kindle, and there'll be a real person there that will basically answer your questions and can um, what you call it, annotate on your screen to tell you where to go and what to press. Okay. Unbelievable. I don't know how I feel about Mayday. Wow. I like being a Mayday. You you like being Mayday. I do. You don't want to lose the control. I don't want to lose control. And if, and uh, before we do our pick of the week, one more story. Uh, Retina Display iPad Mini may not ship with iPad Five this year. The reports are coming in, uh, which I'm fine with because I just I just I want the iPad Five so bad at this point because I'm I'm kind of tired with the iPad Two. It's gotten kind of sluggish for me, and I'm ready for the upgrade. So. Uh, reports are coming in that the Retina Mini may not be coming around the same time due to supply issues. Terrible. This is yeah. a lie. You don't like it. I hope it's a oh, lie. This is a lie. There's no way they would not they would not ship both. All right. I don't believe we'll see. this. We'll see what happens. That, that, I mean, no, well, see, I could see that happening because it's it's no longer Steve Jobs' Apple, it's Tim Cook's Apple. And I could see Ugh. Tim Cook possibly doing something like that. Um, because we didn't have an iPhone 5S pre order. Which I don't think Steve Jobs would have ever. That was not weird, allowed. huh? That was that 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 was weird that we didn't get a pre-order. Yeah, absolutely weird. Um, and, and quite frankly, I'm I'm more interested in a iPad Mini Retina than I am in any other tablet. So, Mini over the regular one. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I, right. I I just think if if I'm going somewhere, I I want something bigger than my smartphone, but not as big as a laptop. Yeah. Or at least not as big as an as an entire iPad because in some cases I think that it's too big and too heavy still. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. I totally agree with you as far as the weight and the, the size. But I, I like laying in bed with this thing and just playing games. And I feel like the screen yeah. size is, is uh, pretty good on this. All right. Uh, pick of the week time, guys. Uh, getting ready to wrap up the show. The pick of the week is something that we like from the week. It could be a website. It could be a product. It could be uh, technology. Tech based, it cannot be tech based. It's anything that we liked. Uh, John, do you want to go first this week? Yeah, I can go first this week. Um, you have both my links, correct? I do. All right. So, uh, as a lot of people know, as we mentioned earlier in this show, um, I went down to Nashville last week to visit my sister. And one of the cool things we did is we drove about an hour or so, a little more than an hour, to Lynchburg, Tennessee, which is where the Jack Daniels Distillery is. And we took one of their tours. They have two tours. They have a free tour, uh, which is like an hour and 10 minutes long. And they have a wow. sampling tour, which is about a half hour longer, an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, it's pretty cool. You get to go around the entire property. They show you a whole bunch of stuff. Um, you can also bring up the uh, photos that I sent you. Um, I took a you bunch of photos the sampling tour, right? There. Absolutely. Okay, <laughs> of course good. I did. Sure. Um, they start out, they show you the Rick Yard, which is where they burn some of the uh, wood that they use to make their charcoal for the filter. They have this amazing filtering process that they use to filter their whiskey. It's absolutely amazing. You'll go around, you'll see the, the, the Rick Yard, you'll see the charcoal, you'll see where they burn it, where they store it. It's pretty cool. Um, and that, that picture right there is in the uh, one of the houses where they store the uh, the uh, charcoal. Um, it's pretty fascinating. That's Ron there in the uh, image right there with the uh, old fire engines. Um, they'll show you the still room if they're not under maintenance, uh, which unfortunately I didn't get to see. They'll show you the old office where Jack Daniel himself and his partner worked for many, many, many years. Um, they'll show you the original stream, which is like just this deep cave, which is super cool. You walk up to this thing and it's like 20 degrees cooler difference between, you know, 50 feet away where you were just standing. It's really cool. This is the original water that they used to make uh, Jack Daniels. They still use it today. It's really fun. And then at the end, they'll show you the the, um, fermenting takes, which is really cool as well. And then also the barrel house, which is where they have the barrels of whiskey aging, which is really cool. And then at the very end, you have a sampling tour where you get to sample uh, one ounce, which they split up into thirds. And they will sh- let you taste, let's see, it's Jack Daniels Single Barrel, um, Old Number 7, and Gentleman Jack, which I have a picture of here if you want to take a look at that. Um, we tried each of those. And it's really fun because when you sample all these back-to-back-to-back, to back to back, 
you really can taste the flavor differences and smell the differences between each of these. Whereas if you're just having one of them and, and you, you know, maybe the next day you have a different kind, you don't necessarily pick up on all these subtle changes by doing these back to back to back. It's really cool. Um, it's only a nominal fee for, for the sampling tour. And it's just not that far from Nashville at all. It's maybe hour, hour and 15 minutes. Uh, cool. and that's a Jack Daniels distillery in Lynchburg, Virginia. Yeah, very cool pick. Very different pick. I had a lot of cool fun pick. there. I'm glad. That was really fun. And Ron, our tour guy, was just awesome. He sounded a lot like uh, John Goodman. <laughs> really? He did. He sounded a lot like John Goodman. It's a big guy from Nashville. Yep. Josh, what is your pick of the week? Well, mine is not a tech pick either there, Andrew. No. Mine is Pokemon. A wait, wait, Pokemon. Digimon. Pokemon. No. Yu-Gi-Oh. No. All right. Magic the Gathering. It's the classic card game that now is even on iOS, but uh, I still have it here in the uh, the physical form uh what what they just released and it's released today how about that september 27th so the magic the gathering thero set releases on september 26th 27th and features 249 black bordered cards including randomly inserted premium versions of all cards in the set theros is available in booster packs intro packs and fat packs uh, in the new set, players venture to Theros, a plane where gods, heroes, and monsters are an everyday fact of life. Hydras, gorgons, satyrs, and other creatures of myth inhabit this wild, mystical place. Andrew, have I got you already? N uh, yu gi -Oh. Sorry. Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So, what I, what I have sent to me, this right here is an intro pack. What you can do with this is you can make a set from this and go ahead and play. Or you can buy these booster packs. You know what? I'm going to be crazy right now. I'm going to open this right on. Who doesn't love opening cards? Look at this. They're Do you feel the sides? Do you feel the sides to see if you got a special card? Oh, my God. Did I get a special card here? I did. Harpy. Harpy. Who are you playing this with? Um, well, that's what's great about Magic the Gathering. Uh, <laughs> Nobody. You can search. You can go to the site and type in your zip code, and you can find areas that are available to go to live tournaments. Are you going uh, to live tournaments? Mostly comic book shops have them. Uh, I was at a comic book shop last Saturday, and I saw they had a Magic the Gathering tournament going on. Do you want to uh, enter? No, I would not because I'm not any good at the, at uh, this game. I, I never, I never played Magic. I never did. What? I never so, okay. played Magic. There's different elements, and you you basically throw down cards. Like if you're if you're um, the forest people, you would throw down. Uh, trees and that builds up your mana and the mana correspond to the numbers on the cards so you can play cards and there's a huge strategy about this i mean if you go to twitch um tv there's live tournaments going on that are people are covering so the car the, my favorite part obviously is the art on the cards i mean to be honest with you i just get these cards and look at the art because i think they're beautiful um i do respect the game even though i'm not very good at it but i mean this if there's no better time to get into Magic. I highly recommend the iOS game, too, because they have a great tutorial system on there that will teach you everything. So if you want to get into it and you're a little intimidated by the physical cards, get the iOS version, learn how to play it there, and then hopefully you can convince some of your friends like Andrew or John to play with you when you come visit for Comic-Con in October. Yeah, so we're going to play Magic together. Yeah. I doubt you will. No, I won't. So my, my, brothers, my brothers play Magic. Close. Both my brothers. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, your brothers seem to have way more interests of things I like than me and you have interests together. We only you know have one, in, two interests actually. <laughs> Don't talk about that. We have two interests, and that—that's what keeps our friendship. And one of going. them is wrestling. One of them is wrestling. We don't want to talk about the other one. Right. Um, my pick of the week this week, guys. Uh, I actually have a tech pick, uh, unlike you guys, and it's something called Geizo. Now, uh, I I tend to take screenshots of things. And whenever I take like a screenshot of, let's say, Michael Manna, because me and Calm like to take screenshots of Michael Manna and send it to each other, uh, which we do. I have a folder <laughs> of Michael Let's Manna screenshots. No, are called Andrew in my downloads folder. That all the Andrew sends me, I sort of got like six pictures a day. I do. <laughs> so, but it's a little bit of a pain. Like on a Mac, I got to do a screenshot, then it's on my desktop, then I got to drag it and upload it to you. Yeah. I found this application called Geizo. 
Uh, and I'm going to take full credit for this. Nobody helped me find this. Nobody turned me on it? to this. G-Y-A-Z-O, Gaizo. And I'll tell you how easy it is to take a, take a screenshot on this. So what it does, let's uh, go to it's the free. shot. It is free. So here's the application. I downloaded it in the Mac App Store. It's also on Windows. So mm -hmm. I click on it, and it gives me this crosshair. So I select the area, takes a screenshot, mm -hmm. and then it opens up a website with the screenshot in there. And you can so you just, just copy and paste. It, it, it takes a URL. Yeah, it makes a URL. You just take the URL and you just you know send that to whoever you want. And it also archives it if you registered. It also archives everything that you've done. Can you also save it or drag that picture to your desktop from the browser? No, it's not saving it. it it's saving it in the cloud. It's not saving it locally. Oh, so I don't have to have a folder called. You don't Android need a folder. Just create. Well, whenever I send you one, uh, it just you know a link. Amazing. Rather than me having to upload it to like Imager or something like that to send it. Wow. Uh, it's it's a free app. It's in the Mac App Store. It's on Windows. Uh, it's a really cool app. I It's made my life so much easier with sending screenshots of stuff because I like to just like take 4,000 screenshots and send it to people all day while I'm working. Uh, it's called Geizo. It's available on every platform. Also, Geizo for iPhone has been released. So if you guys have iPhones, you can get it on that. And that's my pick of the week. See, I actually had a good one. That is pretty good. I John, can't you don't like my that. pick? Uh, you know that Nick Craig uses that. I know he does. Time. I'm not going to give him credit for it, though. I don't Craig care. Nick. Craig Nick. <laughs> Greg's Digital Mayhem. That's his website, actually. You could go there if you want to get apps. You download so Apple So what, what is John saying? This wasn't an original pick by you? No. He's, he's saying it's not. Oh. You said it was. I'm calling him out. I was being very sarcastic. All right. Uh, go to our website, jfknetwork.com, if you miss any portion of the show. Of course, guys, I encourage you guys, please subscribe to us. Uh, when yes. you do, it helps us out because more people download it. Also, uh, I, I ask you guys for a little favor every now and then. Uh, we have an Amazon affiliate link. Uh, if you click on the little link next to, next to the video or if you go to gfq.co slash Amazon, we will get a little tiny credit for every time you guys buy something on Amazon. And with that credit, it's maybe a couple of percent here and there. But it helps us out. Every time I need to get an upgrade, every time I need to get a wire, a new camera, something like that, we use that to purchase it. And it kind of subsidizes uh, the costs of running GFQ. Uh, and you know what? It's no problem for you guys because you're not giving money. You're not spending money. It's stuff that you're already buying. And you're just using our little link. Uh, to purchase. It's gfq.co slash Amazon, or you could click on that little Amazon link. Also, guys, uh, we have a UK one as well. Uh, so if you um, if you go to our donate page, if you're in the UK or in Canada, you could use our UK and Canada link as well. So uh, You know what I'm doing? I'm going to, doing? right before I'm about to buy something, I'll go to gfq.com and there's this great pop-up now that says, click this to go to Amazon, and it's even easier. Yeah, see? We yeah, make it very you don't even have to it. worry about going anywhere. It's no, right there. It's right there. Uh, right so there. Uh, you could you could help us out that way. You can follow John on Twitter at Suncast. John, thanks for uh, being here this week. Yep. And of course, uh, culmination on Twitter, Josh Coleman. You can follow his sister, Kellen Coleman. Isn't isn't no. she around? She's verified. She is verified uh, on Twitter. She's actually on her way uh, here right now. Oh, okay. Maybe she'll uh, call us Lloyd Van Buren tonight. Maybe she should call us Lloyd Van Buren tonight. <laughs> and, of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. Uh, we'll be back next week, guys. So uh, have a great weekend, and uh, see you all next time.